Welcome to a Full Force Movie News Burst special brought to you by General Joe's Reborn.com with me, Christopher McLeod, aka Diagnostic 80, and Justin General Joe's Bell. There was so much movie news this week that you're basically getting a second weekly. It's the <laughs> Full Force Movie News Burst special. No explosion. There's no explosions in the movie news burst, so I always forget that. It's Snake Eyes running on a thing and slicing at the screen. I always, <laughs> I'm like, there are no explosions. Sort of, it's whack. Yeah, it's swing. Yeah. Swing, yeah, <laughs> swing. nice. <laughs> Especially when we're on, Justin, it's definitely, yeah, exactly. definitely swing. <laughs> Lots of swing going on. <laughs> Perfect lead in. Right. <laughs> In speaking of swing, speaking uh, speaking of sh- yeah, speaking of swinging, uh, in the plot was right there in front of our faces the whole time. News, brilliant, <laughs> just glides off the tongue, doesn't it? Well, <laughs> this is funny. The plot to the Snake Eyes movie has been staring us in our faces since February 2020. Let that sink in. It would appear as though the United States Copyright Office website has had the following plot description on show for over a year now, and it appears to line up with the test screening plot we reported on a few weeks ago. Spoilers ahead, so if you don't want to know what happens in the movie, then skip to the time shown. To my left... 6 minutes 7 seconds. So, the description reads... While on the hunt for the men who murdered his father, Snake Eyes saves the life of Tommy, Storm Shadow, the future leader of the Arashikagi clan. But it's a setup. Snake is really working for Tommy's banished brother, stealing a sacred jewel in exchange for info about his dad's killer. Then, Kenta's devastating secret agenda is revealed, and Snake's true loyalties are put to the test. This syncs up nicely with the previous test screening plot leak and solidifies the storyline as well as piecing together some images we have seen in the recently revealed teaser trailer. I think we are likely to get another more involved trailer before the movie drops on the 23rd of July, but this just makes me more excited and I hope we get something during Yojo June, which would make a lot of sense a month out from the release date. Justin, thoughts on the fact that we've had this description here the whole time and nobody noticed it's pretty funny yeah and i think you know if we had looked at it we probably would have said yeah yeah that sounds about right and but lining it up with the more detailed kind of plot reveal from the person who was actually at the test screening shines a little bit more of a light on it i think a lot of that some of this is a little generic i think the sacred jewel you know that that does align pretty pretty closely with what was talked about at that test screening um so i'm sure that would have lifted some eyebrows a little bit but um but you know a sacred jewel is not necessarily a a mystical jewel so i think knowing that added detail is makes that a little bit more intriguing Mm. um but yeah it is it's funny that it's been sitting out there and nobody really has noticed it until recently um but it does clearly kind of uh, identify kenta as kind of the overarching villain and and kind of ties in snake eyes and storm shadows you know past a little bit more nicely than we've known before yeah absolutely and um again like yeah like you say kind of really ties into that that plot reveal leak that we had i I agree with you i think the description is is kind of it's 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 stuff that we kind of already knew we were told very early on from the script leak years ago and then that was kind of um i suppose reinforced in the first article the first official article that was in i think like entertainment one of the one of the one of the the sites that always break the hollywood reporter maybe yeah. but it was it was like Something they, they like even said that it was about snake eyes and his father and the revenge aspect so again you know that they would have probably known that description and just not not yep. printed it so i find that quite interesting as well that, they, that they've managed to hide it in plain sight this entire time yeah and it's interesting though do we know for sure that that's been there the whole time because i know sometimes i i believe you can edit that stuff after posting i think i mean i don't know that for sure but i wonder if they made an addendum at some point and added that later like maybe it's not been it hasn't been sitting there maybe the copyright entry has been sitting there since february 2020 but maybe they added that sort of addendum after the fact maybe not i don't know exactly how that all works but that is a good point though and it's not what i'm 100 percent sure on because i i would assume that they are like I, I, in my head, they are kind of creating this copyright yeah. and they need that information That's for that copyright. Yeah. But 
yeah. that, that you know wouldn't surprise me if that was the case and that's why it wasn't noticed before because mm-hmm. I, I know that like we, we've got a few people in the fandom that, that troll the copyright uh, right. information you know the for for movies related to gi joe for um you know product uh, related to it um and all that kind of stuff we and so we know that people would have noticed it if it had been there yeah. um so that's a very good point it might have been an addendum that was added later in which case i i think it's funnier to me that or it, it's it's more romantic to me that it's just been there just going hey oh yeah. and no, like hey guys <laughs> check noticed. me out and like yeah. no one's looking at me i'm like what i'm i'm here i'm naked literally <laughs> and no one is checking me out um which is probably a good thing but yes that that just makes me laugh more it makes me it makes me feel like you know a bit a bit more like yeah a bit more, more romanticized about yeah you know maybe the internet isn't all knowing all the time you know? <laughs> That's true, um, but yeah. Anyway, that's the the the, the, the kind of the, the, you know the secret plot leak that kind of popped out. Um, but one other thing that kind of popped up again within the kind of copyright office website is in the hunt for Infinity Mask news. I don't know why it makes me laugh so much, but it does. Cast your minds back to August of 2019 and an article from The Hollywood Reporter, which, well, reported on the story that the two Mission Impossible writers, Josh Applebaum and Andre Nemec, were working on a new G.I. Joe sequel centering around the Joe's undercover spy, missile-lugging mute, and tomahawk-riding extraordinaire chuckles. I mean, it does depend on what version you're looking at, really, doesn't it? But... (laughs) Uh, anyway, his tank have been sniffing around the United States Copyright Office website this week, obviously, and they have found an entry for said movie and a title which was never revealed by the Hollywood Reporter in the original article. The title is G.I. Joe and the Hunt for Infinity Mask. Now, this sounds a little clunky, and I imagine it will be revised going forward as we have been under the assumption the working title was Ever Vigilant. In any case, it is an odd choice, and I hope we can get a bit more clarity on what the film will be about in the near future. But as of now, get your Infinity Masks ready for the next few movies entitled Captain Gridiron Civil Battle, (laughs) G.I. Joe Age of Zartan, and of course, Worlds Without Endgame. (laughs) Yeah? Actually, I'd be up for all of those cinematic masks. Yeah, I I would see them in the (laughs) theatre. Justin, your thoughts, mate, on this title and what the ever vigilant kit means? Ah, uh, well, yeah, not to be confused with the Infinity Gauntlet, I guess, which you are, you already made that joke with all those other movie <laughs> titles. But uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's an odd choice. I think it it obviously leans into this whole mystical artifact sort of element because, mm. I mean, an Infinity Mask, you know, just by the nature of its name, makes you think that it's it, it, it's odd. It's it's sort of like leaning kind of into like sort of an uncharted kind of, you know, the, the PlayStation property uncharted, you know, where... Yeah, Nathan like Drake's Tomb Tomahawk Raider and stuff artifacts. like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tomb Raider, you know, Indiana Jones, that kind of thing, where they're looking for relics of some kind that, you know, either give... Or, or valuable or give you supernatural abilities or whatever but yeah i mean so there's there seems to be kind of that underlying current of adventure team kind of with a lot of these themes i think that ha- that you see that in snake eyes you know i'm not going to spoil it but there are some plot reveals that we've talked about before where you know it could be kind of adventure teamish. i think the hunt for the infinity mask i could see i you know i can close my eyes and look at you know in 19 19- late 1960s, 1970, and see an adventure team package on the shelf that says the hunt for Infinity Mask. Yeah. I mean, it, it fits really well. Um, so no matter kind of what, you know, us 40-something-year-old 80s, you know, children want to, you know, complain about, well, this isn't G.I. Joe. Well, it kind of is, and it was G.I. Joe before, you know, we came around. So it all sort of has its place. And I think uh, it's what's been clear from the start from most of these iterations of G.I. Joe is that, Hasbro is trying to lean into some of those, you know, adventure team properties. I mean, we had G.I. Joe Retaliation actually had, you know, the original Joe. And, um, you know, rumor is some of those those yeah. folks that were helping him out were members of the adventure team previously. Um, you know, that wasn't necessarily used in the script, but uh, early early versions of the script kind of called them out as being adventure team members or original G.I. Joe team members. So it's, um, you know, you definitely see those elements kind of woven throughout the fabric 
of this G.I. Joe film franchise as it stands. So this, is, this isn't any different. Um, I think ultimately it'll come down to kind of how it appears on screen. I'm certainly not going to look at Infinity Mask and go, oh, that's garbage. I'm not going to, you know, that's ridiculous. I'm, I'm going to let, you know, give them their shot. I think, you know, it's G.I. Joe as a straight-laced 80s anti-communism military, you know, special operations force. I, I don't think that that flies in 2021. Um, I think they've got to find some new twists to it. And mm. I think this is one way to make that happen. And if they're at some point down the line trying to tie in these other Hasbro properties like Visionaries, Transformers, whatever, you got to inject some of that otherworldly uh, influence where you can. So um, I, it's very interesting. Uh, like you say, I'm not sure it's going to stay like this. Yeah. Um, you know, it may dovetail on something else. It may become ever vigilant or whatever. But uh, I, I think it's kind of cool that this stuff is floating around out there and, and you know, you're kind of seeing some of these puzzle pieces, um, you know, not really fitting together, but sort of you can see the pictures on them. It's kind of cool. Absolutely. And one thing that might kind of back up what you said earlier on about, um, you know, the description might have been added after the, the fact, there is no description for this. So right. again, you're, you might be totally right on that and that, you know, it, it's not until afterwards that that's added to the uh listing the post Mm -hmm. so again i'm i i think what's happening here is there's a there's a real attempt it would appear to me to like directly kind of not mimic but but kind of they're they're almost going very marvel on this because they want to build this universe and obviously marvel Mm -hmm. is a very successful already well ingrained built universe in the in cinematically and obviously, the the things that you evoke from those words are Marvel related things, aren't they? Like Infinity mm-hmm. Gauntlet. I even made the joke earlier of the Captain Gridiron Civil Battle, which I think is probably a really good movie in the making. There, lovely. Yeah, he's got as long as he's got football grenades. That's all I care about. <laughs> Who would Iron Man be in that? It would probably be like Barricade or something like oh, that. Oh, there you go. Barricade, there you go. That'd be good. Or uh, General Hawk with his uh, his his. <laughs> rocket pack Jet pack yeah. yeah love it um i'm gonna stop talking about stupid stuff now <laughs> but um, actually no general hawk could be more like falcon probably with the wings or whatever i, mean, I don't know falcon would be falcon well uh, that's a good point it's got to be the sonic fighter version though and he's got to be a drug addict and his yes i like that <laughs> <laughs> we're just going to talk about deke you know deke animation for the next two hours and his his main foe would be raptor could you imagine that? That'd be so... And he'd be Vulture, wouldn't he? Oh, yeah. This works, man. It's just it Everything does. fits perfectly. I am just really excited, again, that this is something that's being developed. It's the next G.I. Joe movie. Chuckles is involved, clearly. You know, I'm hoping all of these, these kind of rumours do actually turn out to be legitimate because where if, if I think where we were when we were talking about the Snake Eyes movie, we weren't far off, were we? When we were talking about that leaked script... And all of our thoughts about the film, where we are now, it's not it, like the things, the themes that were coming up in that leaked script and for what we're actually dealing with now are pretty much spot on, aren't they? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I mean, I, I see a lot of those same elements. Yeah. So it's probably going to, I imagine it'll be a very similar kind of thing. You know, we'll get Wild Bill, the, the Crimson Twins, we'll get <laughs> Kill Hall randomly. <laughs> We'll get uh, what was it? Uh, 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 not um, it wasn't. Oh, it was an antimatter device. It was an. It was a time machine, wasn't it? Yeah, it was something like that. And I've heard early scripts too that had the Weather Dominator in it. You know, kind of type. But that was originally, I think, going to be a sequel to Retaliation. So I don't know if they'll carry any of that stuff forward. But oh, I'm just so excited to see what they do with it now. I know. Uh, this is even before Snake Eyes is out. But yeah. I don't know. I, and and you know, we get we'll get onto it in a little bit, in a little while as well. But there's there's another kind of project with GI Joe. Uh, you know on the silver screen which i'm really excited for as well which Definitely. tell you what let's let's move out of hunting for the infinity mask and let's move on to the next story which uh is kind of related to gi joe obviously it has to be doesn't it otherwise what the fuck would i be doing it for um, <laughs> <laughs> in ridiculous amounts of money takeover news A very small struggling e-commerce company you've probably never heard of called Amazon has acquired acquired the famous Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer Studios, a.k.a. MGM, for, get this, $8.45 billion. The full force did bid as well, but we were edged out of our attempt at $8.45. 
<laughs> close. <laughs> Man, we could have had the James Bond franchise, dude. Mate, could you imagine? Now, MGM, of course, is a major co-producer and co-financier of the Paramount G.I. Joe live-action movie series, including the upcoming Snake Eyes G.I. Joe Origins movie. As well as that, Amazon recently entered into an agreement with Paramount to produce and stream a brand new TV series based on Lady J. Amazon is getting all up in G.I. Joe, it would appear, with these recent moves. Not their sole focus, of course, but a very big industry move and one that shows just how huge a company Amazon actually is. I don't see much I don't yeah, I don't see much in this that will affect the G.I. Joe projects, Justin, but I mean still interesting, isn't it, nonetheless? It is, it's really interesting and, and it's funny. I've seen um you know, in kind of another area of my life, you know, I think most people watching this know I'm an author and I sell primarily on Amazon, so I am involved in sort of a lot of those Amazon conversations and um I was in one conversation with, with a group of folks who who were kind of musing about uh, I think this rumor had come up a while ago, you know, a few weeks ago. So they were kind of talking about, is, you know, is this real? And somebody, you know, just kind of said, well, geez, why doesn't Disney just buy Amazon? And you're like, well, wait a minute. Amazon is worth like four of Disney. And at that point, you're just kind of like, wow. Because you think of Disney as just being this behemoth that yeah. envelops everything. And yet Amazon is, you know, three or four times as lucrative as Disney is. So, I mean, it's it's really mind-blowing, um, yeah, the scale of what we're talking about here. And I really find this MGM acquisition pretty fascinating, not just from a G.I. Joe perspective, but um, also for the brands that kind of come along with it. I mean, the James Bond franchise is <laughs> part of MGM Studios. Yeah. You look at something like The Handmaid's Tale, which is aired exclusively on Hulu, that's an MGM property. So what happens now? Future seasons go on Amazon? Um, you know, I mean, is that what's going to happen? I think there's Fargo, which airs on FX, I think is an MGM property. So does that now go over to Amazon for any future seasons or past seasons? I mean, there's a whole bunch of moving parts and pieces that are involved here. And I think it's it's pretty interesting, but it does also speak to, I think, Amazon sort of struggling with their streaming service a little bit, which is interesting to consider because I always thought of Amazon Prime as kind of being one of the leading streaming mm. services out there. I use but- it all the time. I'm, yeah, so do I. I'm, I'm currently watching, I think, Mr. Robot on there and yep. <laughs> a guilty pleasure of mine, White Collar mm-hmm. um, on there too. So like, there's, there's, there's definitely stuff on there that I kind of, right. you know, go, go to and check out. And the fact you just mentioned that, the fact that this MGM, you know, MGM has this huge back catalog and it's, it's massive. So you just know all of that stuff's coming over to Amazon, and this is yep. it does it feels like a move, doesn't it? Like a to to kind of push that streaming service to the kind of to the Definitely. like elite levels. Yeah, I mean, their their Prime Video service is as great as it is. The interesting thing is, it's it's kind of a tack on. Like you buy Prime to get your free shipping, free two day <laughs> shipping, and yeah. this just kind of comes with it. And it's like, well, geez, you know, they could probably charge a dedicated fee just for the streaming service and probably make out pretty well. But I think, you know, this move with MGM, um, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure if they're going to kind of leverage this to drive more people to Prime or if they're going to think about spinning Prime off into its own kind of streaming service separate from their two-day shipping deals. Um, I don't know, because Amazon's philosophy is always um, sort of about, you know, they come to Amazon to watch the latest episode of, you know, whatever, you know, Jack Ryan. <laughs> And while yeah. they're there, they hop over somewhere else and buy, you know, two hundred dollars worth of product. And kind of that's that's the idea is that they go to this one place and they end up buying this bunch of different stuff. And that's I see that every day with with book sales too, because you know you you have affiliate links with your books and different things like that. And the the key is to kind of hit that algorithm right and have your search results appear in certain places. And then people who are shopping for you know a backpack will see an ad for your book come up and be like, yeah. oh, you know, I'll get a book while I'm here. And that's the way Amazon kind of sees themselves is just this one stop shop. You can do whatever you want in one place. And maybe they wouldn't want to risk that by charging more for the streaming service. But anyway, what they're doing, like you said, is just adding this massive back catalog of property to to their already pretty impressive library. And uh, I think it's they're really trying to change the landscape, I think, for uh, streaming services going forward. Because as funny as as much as you hear about HBO Max and um, you know Disney Plus and Paramount Plus, uh, Netflix is still the gorilla they're still the one you know above all the rest so i think amazon is finding trying to find a way to kind of knock them from their pedestal a little bit yeah i think i definitely think it could be a way of you know positioning themselves a bit higher in that streaming service kind of aspect because Mm -hmm. when you think about all of the different things mgm have as well it's it's you know it's 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 massive 
So yeah. all of that is going to be coming off other services, like you say, like Hulu and, and you know all those other services that are kind of running those things. And it's all going to shift to Amazon Prime. So you, 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 you've got to bet that a lot of eyes are going to shift as well to you know to going straight to amazon for those things yeah i mean to me it's it always struck me that they want to be the one-stop shop for everything huge like e-commerce you know down pat like no one has has managed to do what they've done and like you say yeah. the disney thing is crazy because disney has always been the corporation that is even satirically joked about in other shows like the simpsons rip on it in uh, the itchy and scratchy land episode yeah you know that kind of like behemoth of a of a company and amazon eclipses it that to me is bonkers when you think yeah, about is. what disney is about you know like and what they own and what yeah. you know they're it's crazy it is yeah i mean lucasfilm and marvel and you know the disney properties themselves it's just 20th century fox at this point i mean disney is a behemoth but you know in spite of how large they are amazon is still a few steps larger it's and Amazon are doing crazy. things like they're doing like artificial intelligence, and there's other stuff they deal with as well. It's yeah. not you know, uh, e-commerce is is the main one, but there's a, there's a ton of crazy well, yeah, you, stuff. Amazon there. Web Services and kind of all the stuff that goes along with that, and, and yeah, like you said, some of this you know high-powered computing and things they're they're all over the place. Yeah, so basically, it's just going to destroy all of the GI Joe product. Uh, that's coming out. No, I'm, not... <laughs> um, I'm really excited for that Lady J TV series. Um, that's another thing that kind of, you know, kind of spins off this a little bit. We haven't heard anything since that reveal. I think back at one of the uh, fan first for one of the, the. It wasn't the last one. I think it was the one before. It was, know. wasn't it? Yeah. Um, but we haven't really heard anything since then. Um, I, 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 I'm, I, I'm guessing they're still developing scripts they're probably casting as well they probably haven't made that decision yet right that's going to be really interesting when we find that that information out isn't it it is it's gonna it's and i'm i'm you know kind, part of me kind of thinks a lot of it sort of hinges on snake eyes but you know i don't maybe not maybe they'll they're if they're far enough along on the lady j series they're going to move move forward on it anyway but um i think snake eyes is going to play a pretty important role in kind of the future of gi joe in cinema or on streaming services so yeah fingers crossed i mean it, it's tough because you know the as much as you know we're loving that we're, the life is sort of coming back to normal i don't i still don't think movie theaters are back to normal yet i mean you know, king kong versus godzilla is supposed to be like the the latest huge blockbuster and i think it made like 300 million dollars or something like that which is good but you know two years ago it might have made you know 800 million dollars so i mean it's, yeah. it's it's a whole different can of worms these days so it's um it'll be interesting to kind of see i think probably a good measuring stick might be black widow i don't you know we'll have to see what black widow does when it comes out you know a couple weeks before snake eyes um but maybe that'll be you know the more i thought about it the i kind of think it's smart the way they're doing you know the scheduling with snake eyes because you know black widow will kind of get people and be acclimated to going back to the theaters this is a big, huge Marvel property. And maybe they'll do that and they'll kind of be like, okay, this was good. This is, this worked out well. And they'll be in the mood to go to a theater. And then here comes Snake Eyes a couple of weeks later. And, you know, maybe more people will kind of check it out, you know, having been coaxed into it with the Black Widow film. I'm definitely, um, I'm definitely hitting the theater for it. I have to see this for on Snake the screen. Eyes? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I still got to figure that out. I still don't have any movie theaters open within like 30 miles of me. So I have to figure out kind of where I can go to. You'll have to come down here yeah. the night before, stay with us, and then <laughs> we go out as a full force team. That'd, That'd be, be so much fun, actually, wouldn't it? That'd be beautiful. What would be really great is if we could all go down to Pat's uh, theater oh, and, watch, and watch it as a t as a as a full group yeah oh that would be so much fun that would be fun apart from paddy and brian they can fuck off their miles away yeah yeah well Thank they can you. fly over if they want but yeah whatever <laughs> as if and they're, no, they're too busy kind of rolling around in their cash from their kickstarter i think oh fingers bloody crossed i <laughs> i need that book in my life but anyway, yeah it's an awesome looking book shout out to paddy and brian and uh total action total action force the battle years as well go uh there'll be a link in the description you can go and uh you know find it pledge let's get this funded guys uh, less than a week to go now um and also i will i will sneakily say i do have a few exclusives to to break for that book as well in the next week and they look amazing so uh nice. yeah get stuck in and bloody let's let's do this let's yeah. let's 
try and bust some stretch goals in the next few days. Well, yeah, you're going to have to pay the same amount whether you do it now or in three days. So just yeah. just do it. I or mean, like money 10... doesn't get taken out until it successfully funds. So exactly. whether you pay now or or in three days, it's you're losing that hundred or you're you're paying that hundred and forty bucks regardless. You know, at the same time. So just do it. Listen just to Justin Bell. Listen to him. He knows what he's talking about. Uh, anyway, Justin, that brings us to the end of our movie weekly. Excuse me, as I burp. Our movie weekly news burst special. Movie news burst weekly. Sp- whatever. It's a special anyway, and we're special. Uh, so thank you very much. <laughs> thank Absolutely. You, thank you very much for being special with me. I, I appreciate it. <laughs> My pleasure, Chris. Always. Um, what have you got? Have you got any? What, I'm, I'm just trying to think of something to sign off with at the end. The two of us can just hang out and say some things. Um, but we don't have to. We can just cut it right there, and I can go straight into the uh, <laughs> the usual. Yeah, my that. brain's too foggy to come up with some interesting kind of side tangents. I feel you. I feel you <laughs> big time. Anyway, that brings us to the end of this episode. Thank you for watching the Four Force Movie News Burst special. Massive thank you to my awesome co-host, Justin Generals Joe's Bell. See you next time. And as always, Justin, one, two, three. it's not the same without pat but it's not not, is it although (laughs) the the one i did on the weekly with pat i just i yelled it so loud it cut his audio out so (laughs) he's just miming it hey whatever whatever works he's with us and he's with he's with us in spirit yes he is he's not dead right cool Make sure you get involved with the discussion by liking, sharing and commenting on these videos and as always you can keep up with the show after listening by following on Twitter at The Full Force, liking the Facebook page facebook.com forward slash The Full Force and if you would like to contact the show you can message us on either of those platforms with feedback and questions. We also have a Patreon page so if you want to show your support for the show, see your name up in lights on these videos or enjoy exclusive bonus content then check out patreon.com forward slash the full force podcast or click the link on any of the posts this podcast appears in full force <laughs>